Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this morning's devotions. It's going to be a great day today, and uh, I'm so glad you could take and tune in. I got up this morning, and I thought to myself, man, it's going to be a good day today. Today's Friday. Two days, and it's Sunday. And man, I'll tell you what, it's great to uh, be up and be alive today. And uh, we've got a whole lot going on around here today because we're trying to get ready for school on Monday. And uh, today we're going to be laying carpet in here. Um, we've got going to finish the, uh, the top of this today. We've got um, uh, the back of the church is getting done as I speak. My office is pretty much done. Uh, the high school room will be done by noon today. The, um, the preschool is done, or just about done. They just have to finish the carpet today. And then we've got to start cleaning everything up in there and start moving stuff back in here out of the semi. And uh, so once we get everything done and back in here, dusted, cleaned, wiped down, we're going to be all set. We've got the new curtains. Uh, all we need to do is just get them hung, but I wanted to wait till all the dust and stuff was out of here before we got them up. And, uh, but other than that way, everything is going very, very, very well. It's um, going to be a great day today, and I'll tell you what, I'm glad that you are tuning in. So if you got your Bibles, turn your Bibles to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. We're going to start reading at verse number 5. We're going to read through verse 11. And I've uh, been studying the book of Philippians. I've got uh, today's devotional and uh, Sunday morning's message is going to be out of the book of Philippians. But um, uh, starting in verse 5, it says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon himself the form of a spirit, of a servant, I'm sorry, and was uh, made in the likeness of man. <clears throat> and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also highly exalted him and, give, and given him a name uh, which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee sh should bow in the things of earth and the things uh, uh, in heaven and the things under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for what you've done for us. I pray now that you'll guide and direct in today's devotions that we might get something out of it that we can use in our own lives. And we'll give the praise and thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. title of today's uh, uh, devotional is Rewards for Obedience. Rewards for Obedience. I want to take a look at um, this uh, in depth a little bit here, these verses. But uh, Jesus lowered himself in verse number 7. If you look at verse 7 again, it says, But made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. We got to just think about this for just a minute. Here Jesus is. He's the son of God. He's in heaven. And he volunteered to come to earth and be made in the likeness of man. And he made himself as a servant. Now, if you think of a servant, a servant doesn't own a lot of things. A servant is one that works for someone else or is enslaved by someone else. And what we need to realize is that when Jesus came to earth, he made himself in the form of a servant. He lowered himself from the Godhead down to being a servant. And we need to realize that he was obedient in doing this. He is obedient in... in uh, um, coming down to being a servant. Not only that, but he also uh, was not only a servant, but he also died a criminal death. If you take a look at verse 8, it says, Being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself 
and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. What we need to realize is this. The only ones that were ever crucified on a cross were the bad of the bad. It'd be much like in the United States today, where the ones that are put to death are the murderers, are the ones who uh, have caused really, really uh, horrendous crimes. They're the ones that are put to death. They're the ones that have the death penalty. They're the ones that, that uh, society has to get rid of. Now here we see that Jesus was in the same realm as that. Even though he had never done anything, even though he had never committed a crime that should have caused him to die, he still was obedient to go to the cross. The cross was one of the worst deaths there were. The, um, when they hung on the cross, uh, the only way that they died was through suffocation. What that means is that they're... Um, they could no longer push themselves up and they have their arms out and their lungs would come down and they would suffocate. They would actually not be able to breathe anymore. And it was one of the most uh, terrible deaths there, uh, that is known to man. And what we need to realize is that Jesus humbled himself and he was obedient unto death. Even the death of the cross, even the worst death there was known to man at that time, Jesus became obedient to that. You know, I, myself, I can't understand why God had to use his only begotten son. But we do know that, that he had to be, number one, perfect. He had to be sinless. He had to be someone who had never done anything wrong. And he's the only one that had ever done that. We need to realize that he uh, became obedient uh, to become a servant and then he was obedient unto death. But what did he get out of it? What, what exactly did it mean for him to be obedient? You know, what we need to realize is when we do something that is um, good or something that we are obedient at, uh, many times we receive a reward for it. We receive something uh, for our obedience. And here we see that Jesus was no different. Even though he was the very son of God, even though he was the third, uh, second of the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, uh, even though he was that, we need to realize that God the Father gave him um, a reward for doing what he was told to do. Look at verse 9. It says, Wherefore God also highly exalted him. Here we see that Jesus was highly exalted. That means that he was above everything else in the universe. He was placed as back in the Godhead again. He was at the right hand of the Father. He was placed in a very prominent position. And he was exalted above everything that was ever created. Not only that, but he was also given a name which is above every name. Notice that he, and given him a name which is above every name. At the name of Jesus, think of that. Think that of Jesus' name above every name that will ever be in history. You know, we think of George Washington, we think of Abraham Lincoln, we think of uh, um, different people who have done great things over, over time. And yet, Jesus, his name is above all names ever. Man, I'll tell you what, that is just fantastic. So here we see that he was exalted above everything. He was given a name above all names. Not only that, but he was also, uh, if you look at verse 10, it says that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Now think about this for just a minute. Who did people bow to? Mainly royalty, kings, princes, queens. And yet here we see that at the name of at the very name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. You know, one day very soon, and it's not going to be too awful long, 
that every knee is going to bow when they see him. When Jesus comes back in the clouds to take the church, every knee is going to bow. Everyone is going to see him. Everyone is going to fall down before him, knowing that he is who God said he was, the very Son of God. Not only that, but look at verse 11. It says, And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Wow! Think about that. One day, every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus is Lord. You know, there's an awful lot of people today all over the world that do not believe that Jesus Christ came to save the world from their sins. One day, they're going to bow the knee. One day, they're going to confess Him to be Lord and Savior. But it's going to be too late. It's going to be too late for them. They're not going to be able to be saved because it's going to be too late. What we need to realize is we need to accept the Lord Jesus Christ while we can. After all, He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by Him. And all of us have to get saved the same way. There's a saying that goes like this. The ground at the cross is level. Everyone has to come to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ the same way. We have to understand that we're a sinner. We have to understand there's a penalty for our sin. We have to believe that Jesus died on the cross for our sin. And we have to accept him to be Lord and Savior of our life. And once we do that, we are the children of God. And if you have never done that, you need to do it today. You need to take and understand that you're a sinner, there's a penalty for your sin, and that you need to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. But here we see that even Jesus, because of his obedience, was given a reward for his obedience. He was given, he was highly exalted, he was given a name above all names, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess to him. We need to realize that each and every one of us are in the same situation where at the name of Jesus, we're going to one day confess everything that we've done wrong. You know, it's such a great thing to know beyond a shadow of a doubt. If I were to die today, I'd be absent from this body and present with the Lord. Because on June 9th, 1962, I asked the Lord Jesus Christ to be my Savior. And again, I've never, ever, ever doubted that if I were to die, where I would spend eternity. What about you today? Are you 100% sure that if you were to die today, you'd spend eternity in heaven? If not, you need to today. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, thank you so much for this morning. We thank you for all you've done for us. I just pray, Lord, that if there's any here listening today that doesn't know you as their own personal Savior, that they may come to know you today. We love you. We thank you for all that you've done for us. We just pray now we'll have a good day today, a good day tomorrow, and we'll have a good Sunday, and we'll give a praise and thanks. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, we've got a little bit of announcements today. Tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock, we're going to have men's prayer breakfast here at the church. And uh, we've got a lot of people that are going to be coming. They're gonna, we're going to have kind of a work day tomorrow. And we're going to try to get the school um, put together and up and running so we can uh, have school on Monday. Uh, this room in here, we've got to finish the uh, tile in here or the, the uh, carpet in here, whatever we don't get done tonight. And uh, we've got uh, chairs to move out of the semi. We've got uh, Lord's Supper table to move out of the semi. We've got a lot of stuff to move out of the semi and get put together tomorrow. So we've got a lot of things that have to be done tomorrow. Um, also, um, we're going to be working hard at a lot of it today, getting it out, getting it organized, so that we know exactly what we have to do tomorrow to get everything back together. So um, if you don't have anything to do tomorrow, why, come on over. Uh, be here at 8 o'clock for breakfast. We're going to have a great breakfast. We're going to have a time of prayer. And then we're going to get busy doing uh, what God has called us to do. All right. But uh, then Sunday morning, 9 o'clock, Sunday school, 10 o'clock, church, 5 
o'clock on Sunday night will be our Sunday evening service. So we've got a lot of things happening this weekend, and um, I just hope that you can be a part of it if you can. If you can't, just pray for us. Pray that we can take and get everything done that we need to get done, and it can be all for God's honor and glory. But um, I want to thank and thank everybody for watching today, and um, we'll see you on Monday morning at 8 o'clock. By then, we'll have students in here, and uh, we'll be all ready to start school on Monday morning. God bless. We'll see you next week. We'll see you on Sunday, and then we'll see you again on Monday morning. Thanks, Dana.